Uh, today I have our product line manager Matt Mingriotis for our point to multipoint line and he will be specifically discussing migrating over to our PMP 450. Uh, if anyone has any questions, please go ahead and post them in the questions box and I will, we will address them as we go along. But without further ado, Matt, go right ahead. Thanks, Andrew. Um, as Andrew mentioned, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, depending on where you're coming from. Uh, my name is Matt Mangriotis. I'm the product line manager for the 450 uh, and associated uh, products. We'll talk today about uh, where we've been and where we're headed a little bit. Um, many of the slides, if you've been on past webinars, will be similar. Uh, but I do want to talk, take it from a different, a bit of a different tack. So let's uh, let's begin with the legacy stuff, if you will. So I'm showing here a slide of kind of a summary of the products we've had in the past, um, and this goes way back. So we we started out with the PMP 100 series, also known as FSK. Uh, we launched this in 2002, uh, to be precise, but kind of uh, larger quantities in starting in 2004, 2005. Um, so we're talking about 10 to 12 year old technology here. But uh, we still have lots and lots and lots of these things out in service today. Um, still feeding that 7 or 14 megabits of information to a lot of customers. Um, and customers that are using it are largely happy with it. Uh, even though it's a 10 to 12 year old technology, it's still chugging along and it does what it does and it does it very well. It's a, it's a very consistent, reliable product. Um, that we've since retired. So we, we eliminated this and uh, stopped selling the PMP100 series um, early this year, uh, late last year. And so now we're moving on to the 450. Everything is focused on the 450. Uh, after the PMP100, we, we did a couple other products. Uh, one of them was the PMP320 product, which was a 802.16e based WiMAX uh, style product in the 3 gig band. Um, several customers put this out. Uh, many had had good results with it, but we uh, also had an issue with that in terms of uh, end of sale uh, due to the, many of the chipset manufacturers that moved away from the WiMAX uh, design in favor of other technologies. Uh, so we were kind of forced to kill off that product line as well. On the 400 series, we went from the PMP100 and we took that canopy and uh, proprietary technology and moved to the OFDM technology, uh, but using the Canopy Max still. And that's what, what was born out of that, is the PMP 400 series. Starting with the 400 in 5.4 and 4.9, uh, we were able to do about 20 megs per sector, so a little bit better uh, throughput. And we also covered a new band in the 4.9 um, gigahertz band. And so that, that product's still in use a little bit around the world today for the public safety band, the 4.9. Um, and then we went the second generation of uh, OFDM based product in the PMP 430. And uh, that was in the 5 gig space. We had a 5.4 version and a 5.8 version. And we, we did pretty well with those. Um, and those are still able to be used with the existing uh, 450 networks. Uh, so the interoperability is there for the 430 subscriber modules with the 450 network. So we'll talk about a little bit about how to move uh, each of these guys over to the new platform, the, the current platform, the PMP450. Uh, just to give you an idea of the complete portfolio, I would like to kind of talk about this. Um, we go, again, from 245 kilometers. So that, that's about the longest link that we've had out there in terms of PTP, um, down to the one meter space, or the you can be uh, Wi-Fi indoors. So we. Starting on the left, we have the, the long products or the microwave uh, line, the 820, PTP 820, and then the unlicensed microwave or unlicensed uh, sub-6 PTP products, which is the PTP 650. Moving to the access layer in the center there, we uh, the flagship product, again, is the PMP 450 line, and we'll talk about how to get you onto that. And then going inside the home or inside the subscriber premise, we can do lots of different things now. Uh, we've launched the Wi-Fi product line, the CN pilot line. Uh, we support home and small business with the R200 series. We do uh, indoor and we will soon do outdoor Wi-Fi uh, with the EPMP Wi-Fi and then the E500 uh, Wi-Fi product. And then we have the enterprise uh, indoor units in the E400. So all of these things can, it's kind of a complete portfolio now in our current product line, and all of them will eventually be able to be managed under the CN Maestro product, which is a great tool for monitoring, management, configuring, uh, upgrading, and uh, maintaining that, that software on all of the, uh, 
on all the products. The 450 will be supported in this uh, CN Maestro tool in Q2. So again, uh, we'll focus today on the 450, and that's the flagship scalable multi-point product line from, uh, from Gambium. What is it? It's the fourth generation. So you notice that I had the, the PMP 100. We started with 100. The, we went to the PMP 400, then the 430, and now we're on the, uh, the fourth generation of PMP product, proprietary PMP products. And it's all about capacity. So we do now, uh, we will have a version of 14.2 software out today, as a matter of fact, that will uh, allow 30 megahertz channel size, uh, which will provide in some situations over 200 megabits per access point. Um, we can put lots of access points together and do uh, over a gig and a half, maybe up to two gigs of tower bandwidth uh, because you can put multiple access points at a given tower, multiple sectors. We do uh, completely uh, configurable duty cycle up to 85% down or 85% uplink. It's based on OFDM MIMO. It's two by two today. And it's a software-defined radio. So we can expand the use of different frequency bands uh, we do now, you know, 900. We cover all the frequencies that the PMP100 product covered in the past uh, with the 450 line today. So that will provide you a path forward for any of those bands that you were using prior to that. We have brought along GPS synchronization, which allows us to maximize spectral efficiency and uh, keep the latency low and consistent because we want to support any application that you need to do with this product. And as we've evolved in the... Uh, software and what the radios do, we also evolve in the hardware. So we make installation much easier these days. Just a simple architecture diagram. Uh, it's a flat network again. We have the access point clusters. Uh, you have a tower site that has access points pointing in given directions. They are directional and typically we do a 60 or 90 degree sector. Um, that access point points toward a customer premise unit or a subscriber module as we call them. That's hooked up to um, inside the home and in here we're showing a CN pilot product to provide Wi-Fi, uh, phone support, and internet connectivity uh, to your any devices inside the home. So very simple architecture, flat architecture, no external equipment needed. I'm not going to read through all the specifications, uh, but I did want to flash this up here uh, just to show that we have all the frequencies covered uh, that were covered by our legacy products, and there's a path to get there for, for each of them. And again, an example of what it looks like, uh, so you get a size comparison. You may notice that the PMP100 series uh, looks just like the subscriber module, that second picture in. It's about 12 inches high, 4 inches wide, and it's, uh, it's a kind of a candy bar type of form factor, similar in, in look. There are many subscriber options available today uh, in the 450 series. So we, we have the integrated guy, which is typical, and he's a somewhat modest gain. Uh, depending on what frequency you're in, it can vary from about 7 to about 10 dBi. And then we have uh, passive devices that can augment that gain. To provide with the clip, you can provide about double the gain. And with the reflector dish, you can get pretty high, uh, upwards of uh, 24 or so dBi in total gain uh, with the 5 gigahertz product. We also offer connectorized versions in both the 450 and 450i. So you can provide your own antenna to... to make any link that's necessary. We recently introduced the 450D, which I'll talk about in a little bit, uh, which is an integrated parabolic dish. And we have the high gain integrated panels in a couple of different frequencies as well. Just a word on GPS synchronization. Uh, this is one of the hallmarks of the platform. And it enables us to not only reuse frequencies uh, with, in combination with uh, high quality sector antennas, uh, but it also allows us to uh, put cells closer together and allow us to not interfere with ourselves. So we're minimizing self-interference, thereby maximizing the use of available spectrum. So we're, all the APs transmit time, then they all turn around and receive at the same time to eliminate uh, anything from stomping on each other and uh, causing interference among your own network. This is an inter-site as well as intra-site uh, technology. So it's all based on GPS, and it's uh, worldwide availability. So it's a pretty useful tool to maximize the use of efficient spectrum. Now, this is a hallmark from the PMP100 days. So if you are migrating to 450, you're familiar with it, and you can actually co-locate the two technologies together. 
to enable an easy transition. Some of the advantages of moving to 450, it is a scheduled TDD channel access. So just like uh, with PMP100, uh, the load is does not affect the scalability. You can have as many subscribers as you want on there, and you're not going to affect latency too much, uh, if, at, if at all. Um, and you can have as much traffic as capable uh, through the network, again, not affecting latency. It's consistent. It's deterministic. It doesn't jump around. Uh, this is critical for certain applications, uh, most, most critical for voice and uh, gaming uh, applications. GPS synchronization, again, leads to uh, reduction in self-interference and efficient channel uh, use, efficient use of the spectrum. All these things lead to high throughput and system capacity. It's, again, much more spectral efficiency than the old products as well as than any other competitive products out there. With 450, we're able to continually evolve. Uh, we've been able to re um, release new frequency bands. It's a spectrum agile architecture, meaning we can re repeat the architecture and the uh, digital logic sections of the board uh, while changing the RF sections to uh, you know, operate in different frequency bands. And so the most recent addition is the 900 megahertz product. We've been able to improve modulation modes. So we've gone from QPSK all the way up to 256 QAM uh, operation. And we've added the ability to do both single payload and dual payload uh, MIMO modes, which given the RF conditions that the link presents, it'll optimize the amount of throughput through, through that link. And it does it all automatically. It's dynamically adaptive. We've improved packet per second performance. Uh, as we move forward, and as we get new hardware into the platform, we're improving that further. Uh, we have a large MTU, about 1,700 bytes, which is friendly to those networks that are employing MPLS uh, for uh, transmissions. We have a feature-rich QoS as well. Uh, we can prioritize packets, and it does this uh, both in Layer 2 and Layer 3. So it's a, it's a pretty rich suite of, uh, of uh, QoS features. Just to give you a little bit of a uh, near-term roadmap, if you will, um, we released in June kind of a, a pretty stable release in 13.4.1 that has a lot of new features. We've introduced some new hardware since then. Um, and we are very, very close to releasing 14.1.2, which, again, will be kind of a stability release that uh, fixes a ton of bugs. And then we have a, a beta coming uh, this week for 14.2, which will enable the use of 15 and 30 meg channels, as well as the second Ethernet port on the 450i. So let's talk through some of these things a little bit more detail. 14.1.2, um, we anticipate, will be the most stable uh, release that we've had yet for the 450 platform. The beta, build 14, is out on the, the beta uh, software download page now. We know that uh, we have uh, lots of customers that have already downloaded and are testing it. And we've had no reports uh, of anything additional that need to be fixed. Uh, we, we believe this is just about ready to go. And I think we're going to target the end of next week to get this thing out in the, uh, the official release uh, done and dusted. So this is a great stability release. Uh, you can see a snapshot of the, I'm not going to read through, obviously, the, uh, the list there, but tons and tons of bug fixes and stability enhancements on this, on this platform, uh, this software release, rather. System, for, system release 14. Um, not only all of those features and stability releases uh, on the prior one, uh, but now we're adding 30, 30 megahertz channels. What this does for you is essentially 50% more bandwidth um, to the platform. And be, being as it's a 30 meg channel, it is pretty efficient uh, with our system as well. And when you're doing 450 to 450, you'll see about 170 megs of real world type throughput. And then if you're doing 450i, you see a little bit better uh, even than that because the 450i is a little bit more powerful platform. And this is really uh, limited by the access point. So as we start getting the 450i access points available, um, I would recommend you uh, look toward that if you're planning to use 30 meg channels uh, because it does show a, a significant improvement further uh, by using the 450i. Another feature we're enabling is the aux port. Uh, we have a kind of a demonstration tank, if you will, here uh, in the office that uh, has the 450i underwater. 
This is a subscriber module that has the uh, POE camera attached to the aux port. And it's actually uh, displaying and streaming video right out of the uh, fish tank there. And this is enabled on 14.2 as well. So we, we uh, have the aux port that can supply POE to a camera, a Wi-Fi access point, or even another uh, access point, like a remote access point, if you want to do that. So we're here simulating video surveillance applications uh, without using separate power supplies. But this can do lots of different functions on that aux port. That will be enabled as well in 14.2. 450D, I uh, just want to spend a minute talking about what that is. That's, it's the integrated parabolic antenna. Provides 25 dB of gain, which is higher than any other uh, integrated device we have. It also eliminates the assembly of two separate units, meaning the subscriber and the offset reflector dish. It's a very easy assembly, a much more intuitive alignment. And we're seeing customers who are getting used to using these that are having much more success uh, with these guys than they were with the offset reflector. It is cost-wise about the same or a little bit less than the existing subscriber with offset reflector. So I encourage you to try this out. Um, speed of deployment and improved first install rates are, are being reported all over the place. And this is with the 5 gig uh, product, the 5 gig uh, 450. 450i. So let me spend a minute talking about what this is. This is uh, the new radio. It's a complementary product to the portfolio. Uh, we didn't replace anything. Uh, we're not taking anything out of service yet. Uh, but it covers the entire 5 gig band from 49 to 5925. Now it's not compatible with the PMP 400 in 49, um, but we do again. We can offer that uh, frame control to allow migration over uh, to the new to the new platform. It is a re improved radio. We can do a little bit higher transmit power, a little bit better receive sensitivity, and includes dy dynamic interference filtering, which is basically any off-channel interference uh, is knocked down by this radio. If you select a different channel to transmit on, you'll shift that filter, and it'll knock down anything off-channel but in-band. Very effective uh, in terms of uh, isolating the on-channel, and uh, it really helps in uplink modulation. We've seen a lot of customers change their uh, access point from the 450 to the 450i and realize better uplink from all its subscribers. It is built upon a new FPGA. It's actually a system on a chip that has embedded ARM processors. So we're able to do much more in terms of packet per second processing, uh, which helps performance, especially in large channels. It is a ruggedized platform, completely weather sealed uh, IP66 and 67. Visually, it looks a lot like the PTP650, uh, but a little bit smaller. It's all metal construction. And we will be releasing an ATEX HasLock or hazardous location uh, model for this uh, very shortly, probably in the June time frame. It is moving towards the standards-based power scheme. And that's for a couple of reasons. One, you can power this off of an 8023AT switch uh, instead of having a separate power supply. You can plug that uh, gigabit port directly into a switch. Uh, it also allows us to do PoE output uh, from the aux port. So it's, a, it's a moving towards a standards-based power scheme. And why would you purchase the 450i versus the 450? Well, again, it's a better radio design. It increased transmit power where allowed by law, of course. Uh, it better receive sensitivity, so you get a little bit better range on it. It is an updated FPGA, so it's almost four times the processing power of that of the 450. That dynamic interference filter will uh, mitigate interference in a better manner. Um, and that's pretty useful when you have such a wide band radio. Industrialized mechanics, uh, again, ATEX and HasLock versions will be available soon. And we are covering the entire 5 gig band. So if for 450, it opens up a few new bands uh, in addition to 5.4 and 5.8, which are in use, uh, widespread use today. That aux port will be enabled on 14.2, and the beta will be available for that very shortly. Um, so that's coming as well. You can do lots of neat things with that. And again, we're moving to that 8023AT standard. We also have, I do want to point out, a promotion right now. So if you have a 450 or 430 access point and you want to move to the 450i, we have a trade-up promotion available on the website under uh, promotions. And you can fill in the form and uh, Someone will contact you to get some credit on those uh, trade-ins to upgrade to a 450i. Late last year, we launched uh, 
3 gigahertz alternative uh, subscriber module. Now this is using the 450i SM inside the new mechanics to provide an alternative uh, high gain device in the 3 gig space. We have one for the 3.5 as well as the 3.65 uh, depending on which band you're using. But this provides you an alternative to using the offset reflector dish. So very nice package, uh, nice implementation. A little bit more expensive uh, because of the ruggedized mechanics and high performance antenna. Uh, but it is a, uh, a useful tool where you need it. Most recent to the platform is the 900 megahertz. And let me spend a minute talking about this because this provides an avenue uh, for customers that are otherwise stuck with PMP100. It provides an avenue to get more throughput. Um, it operates in the same band. We do support now 5, 7, 10, or 20 megahertz channels with this device. That means there's more flexibility in how to use those 26 megahertz of spectrum. It's 2x2 two two MIMO design. It is based on the 450 and 450i. So it is a every bit that radio platform, um, but in the 900 megahertz band. The AP is a 450i design. Uh, therefore, it uses the 8023AT power scheme, 56 volts. Uh, and it has the aux port, just like the other 450i's. The SM, however, is was based more on the 450 line and that's so we can reuse the existing power supplies and uh, when you go to replace the customer premise equipment you don't even need to go in the customer's home you can simply go outside replace unplug the cable from the FSK device plug it into this device and off and running it's utilizing the 450 architecture therefore we can maximize spectral efficiency by using GPS um, what we're seeing is that under similar conditions, even in poor RF environments, we're seeing about three to four times the amount of throughput. So we're going from the four megs, you were limited to about four megs with the FSK product in a sector, and now we're seeing you know, 15 to 18 megabits of, of uh, capacity. And in clean spectrum, if you do happen to have a clean area, you can do every bit as much as the 450 can do and provide over 100 megs per, per sector. Um, so again, increased performance, it's based on the 450i uh, platform. Uh, with 900 megahertz, propagation is great. Uh, you can do non-line-of-sight links. Uh, you can shoot through things. It, uh, it penetrates very well. It's industrial rated. It's designed to meet those, uh, those uh, ratings on the AP side of things, so they'll, they'll last forever. And the SM is very clean uh, installation. That radio clips onto that Yagi antenna. It's slim, but it's still about 12 and a half dB I of uh, gain, which is great. Uh, we do have an SOC in the AP, which again is uh, powerful for pa processing packets, and we have that aux port on there as well. And again, mentioned the power scheme on the uh, AP side is the 56 volt 8023AT, uh, but on the SM side, we we allowed you to use the continue to use the canopy style power supplies for ease of migration. And just, I want to say a word about migrating for the 900 specifically. Um, you can do it in a number of ways. What we did was put a strategy guide online, and this actually applies to both the 900 as well as the, the other bands. Um, we have one specific to the 900 because it's a little bit trickier because you have less spectrum to deal with. Um, but we have a migration guide available online um, to explain the different options you might have in terms of migrating the site. You can do uh, sector by sector migration, uh, but you, it's, it could be easier for you if you did a site by site kind of migration. And the, the nice thing about this is you can synchronize between them, and you, you kind of uh, you'll experience a much better migra migratory path if you are synchronized. And that's important to make sure that the timing is right and the, the frame calculator tool is available. Um, in an Excel-based format for 900 specifically to enable you to easily do this and perform a migration over time. So again, performance in a clean spectrum is on the right side of the graph and you see you know, 10 to 30 times, depending on the channels you have available, 10 to 30 times the amount of throughput versus FSK. And if you get into a high interference environment, which a lot of folks are, are dealing with, you're still seven or you know three to seven times the amount of throughput that you're getting with FSK. And even at the highest interference levels, we see FSK drop out 
and stop connecting well before we do with the 450i. It's actually a, a better product in every way. So that's kind of the looking at what's existing today. I do want to spend a minute talking about what's coming uh, because this, this platform gets more exciting every, every day. In June or July, actually it's more like July, uh, we're going to be supporting 40 megahertz channels with the 450 platform. Again, that wouldn't, that wouldn't apply to the uh, 900 because there's simply not that much spectrum available. Uh, but for the rest of the bands, uh, we will support a 40 meg channel. And that's coming soon as well, uh, which will again up the headline or the top rate throughput uh, for the platform. We will handle uh, multicast traffic in a little bit better fashion. The radio will have some smarts to decide whether to uh, keep providing multicast or to switch it into a unicast conversion. Uh, we'll be working on getting certifications for many different uh, things, including that ATEX and Haslock certification. And we'll put the ability to support Maestro uh, in this release as well. So that's coming uh, within the next few months. And then in August, we have the big, the big news for the platform. And we're going to be launching what we're calling CN Medusa technology. That'll be on the, a product called the 450M uh, access point or, or base transceiver station. This employs massive MIMO. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about what this is in an upcoming slide. Uh, but it employs not only RF, multiple RF chains like MIMO does, uh, we're also using beam steering and beam forming uh, to talk to more than one subscriber at once. So we're going to be able to triple or better your capacity simply by changing out that access point. And then later in the year, we'll have the 450i in 3 gigahertz. Uh, as well as some additional software features that are coming uh, in December. Uh, we'll have some additional uh, QoS enhancements. Uh, we'll handle CIR a little bit better. Uh, and we'll have 256-bit um, AES and sync uh, via 1588 as well. And then early next year, we'll have a wideband 5 gigahertz SM that will be more reasonably priced, meaning I can cover 49 to 59 with a single device that will be uh, a little bit less money than the 450i product today. So where are we headed with this platform in general? Um, today we do 125 megs. Uh, with the release of the 30 meg channel, we'll be doing about 180 megs. And then when 40 megahertz channels come out, we'll, we'll be able to support 250 megs all on the same hardware that's out today. Uh, with the massive multi-user MIMO or the CN Medusa technology, We'll be combining beam forming again and multiple chains of RF to achieve well over 400 megs uh, per sector, given the right conditions, of course. Uh, but in a high density sector where your subscribers are spread across that 90 degree sector, we fully expect you to be able to do 400 plus megabits of, uh, of data. And we'll continue to build upon this architecture going forward. So as you see in 2017, 2018, we'll be able to achieve over a gigabit per second of data. Uh, in a single access sector. Just to summarize the 450, it's the industry leading solution for point to multi point networks. It's proven field reliable, right? We have, we've been around for a long time. Uh, this technology or the, uh, the Mac layer and the, the proprietariness of the platform has been around for over 12 years. I mean, we, it's software based, so we continue to improve it every time we do a software release, uh, but it, it is a tried and true field reliable technology. The mean time before failure was calculated for the hardware a little above 40 years, but what we're seeing from field returns is that it's more like 90 years. Uh, it's a very reliable product platform, again, uh, and it's extremely scalable. Our access points or base stations can support many subscribers, up to 238 subscribers per access point, and lots and lots of access points can be deployed at every site. Uh, and this is due to the spectral efficiency as well as the frequency reuse capabilities of the platform. It's OFDM MIMO today. It's 2x2 two two MIMO today, but we're, we have this plan to get to multi-user and massive multi-user MIMO um, very shortly here. And the, the beauty of this is that we're future-proofing your investment in the platform today. You can utilize those existing subscribers in the multi-user MIMO system. We uh, continue to use GPS synchronization to maximize spectral efficiency and minimize self-interference. And as you see, there's a robust roadmap, and we have plans to continue uh, heavily investing in this platform in order to uh, deliver capacity uh, to those customers that need it. 
And I just want to show you kind of a graphic of uh, what we've done over the, the last uh, several years, 10 plus years. So again, we were able to deliver 14 megs in 2004 uh, with the PMP100 series of product. We had the second generation of OFDM product that was able to deliver almost 50 megs uh, in 2010. And you see the advancements keep happening uh, in a more rapid fashion. Uh, the 450 was released in late 2012 and was able to deliver 90 megs. Um, and then we've made, since then, we've made software improvements to up that to about 130 megs uh, of throughput. Um, and we'll continue to improve that. Last year, we released the 450i, which is able to do 130 out of the gate. And then soon, we'll be able to do about 250 megs per, per sector using a 40 megahertz channel. And then we talk about CN Medusa and what that's going to do for you. Um, we're saying 300 uh, megs right now with a path to 500 with this hardware um, shortly after launch. And then we'll continue to improve that over time. So as you can see, there's, there's many ways uh, to get to where you need to be in terms of capacity. And we, we have tools available online to uh, help that migration from the old technology, the legacy technology, to get you up to speed with the 450 platform. Um, and at this point, I guess I'd like to open it up for questions and see if there's any questions out there from any, uh, anybody on the phone. You see anything? So far, I don't see anything, Matt, but I want to recommend if anyone has any questions or points, please put them into the question box and we can address them for Matt here. He's a tough guy to get a hold of, guys, so if you can, ask him right now. All right, Matt. Well, I think you, you covered all the bases. Well, I want to thank you, everyone, for joining. Oh, uh, well, one question did come in, Matt. Is there any Omni antenna options through Cambium? So today we don't we don't have any Omnis that we sell uh, directly. There are some Omnis in the in the ecosystem, if you will. Some some third party folks do provide Omnis. Uh, generally speaking, we don't recommend Omnis uh, because you are utilizing um, that spectrum in it when you utilize it in a directional fashion. You can make more effective use of the spectrum that's available. Um, and when you do, you're taking up a set of spectrum in an entire area. So it's a little bit difficult to reuse spectrum in that fashion. Uh, so generally, the recommendation is that you do, you do directional sectors. Uh, but totally understand that in so certain economic conditions where it's uh, sparsely populated and you only have a few clients that you want to connect uh, and they're spread out geographically, it makes more sense to do an Omni. I, I totally get that from a business standpoint. Um, and there are Omnis available in just about every frequency. Um, but we don't sell them. Uh, we, we sell high-performing sectorized antennas uh, that, that go with our uh, access points. Thanks for the question. Uh, Matt, will the interface for the PMP450 line and the EPMP line be joining? Um, not in the near future. The, the beauty of the CN Maestro product uh, is that you'll be able to configure, control, monitor, uh, upload software, and all of that with Maestro uh, rather than going to the radio itself. So Maestro kind of unifies the entire platform. But the radio's uh, GUI, the radio interface itself, will likely be separate for quite some time. We're, we're not in a hurry to um, integrate those two. The, the, the two product lines, the EPMP and 450, have different strengths um, and somewhat different uh, feature sets that require kind of the uh, the difference in the in the GUI. So no, there's no plans to integrate those two uh, anytime soon. Um, is the 450M AP compatible with the 450SMs? Yes, so 450M, uh, which is going to employ CN Medusa technology and utilize multi-user MIMO and a ma massive multi-user MIMO. Um, yes, it will be compatible with the existing 450SMs. Great, that, that's a great value for customers that are investing in the platform today. Is the 450i AP compatible with the 430SMs? Yes, also that is true. So the 430SMs can operate with uh, either a 450 AP or a 450i AP, and you can actually mix all of those within the sector. Um, so we have a customer here looking at to um, the, can they use a second aux port off the 450i plug to the old access points of Trango while they start making the switch over to Cambium? So I'm not sure what kind of power the Trango accepts, but if it is 8023AT compatible, 
then the answer is yes, uh, AT or AF. So if if the um, Trango device can operate on 802.3AT or AF, it can plug in to that aux port and be powered, and then also uh, it can switch the data coming out of that as well. So yes, the answer is most likely yes. Can you migrate sector by sector from the 430 APs to the 450I slash M APs? Yes, uh, you can. That That is a bit tricky, uh, but and that's because you would need to go Let's, let's think about that for a minute. Um, the 430 AP can be swapped out with a 450, and all of the 430 subscribers will operate um, with that 450 access point. So that is definitely the first step. 450M uh, will not support 430 subscribers. So there, there's a step in there where you're going to need to migrate all of your 430SMs to 450SMs before migrating to the massive MIMO product, the 450M. Um, so I hope that was clear. But uh, 430 will not be compatible with 450M. Can you go into a little more detail on the 900 meg SM antenna options that we currently have available? Sure. Um, we only have one option available today, and that's the 12.5 dB Yagi uh, directional antenna. Um, that is, we made that choice to launch with that product uh, because it's a very, a very effective uh, gain versus cost uh, type of uh, calculation there. So that, that antenna is MSRP of $89. It's a very reasonably priced antenna, and it provides you with 12.5 dB of gain. Now, there are going to be options in the, available in the market that are higher gain, um, but they will be more expensive. And uh, for those customers that need those, I, I totally understand that as well but right now we have that single option uh, available and we're also we also are talking to several vendors that are working on panels uh, because sometimes folks don't want to use uh, Yagi's that are susceptible to ice buildup and that sort of thing for inclement weather but right now that's the only option on the SM side for, from Cambium. Matt is there a specific chart that shows the distance and modulation rates with a 30 meg channel? There will be. Uh, the user guide will be updated when we release 14.2. Uh, that will show you that. Generally speaking, you can expect when you go um, to a wider channel, you're going to lose a little bit of sensitivity. So your distance will become a little bit less than it is with a 20 meg channel. So that's kind of uh, your highest modulation will only go so far. Uh, you'll be a, a little bit more limited as you get to a wider channel. So I don't have those charts yet. But when that software is officially released, um, we will definitely have the the user guide updated with those charts in it. And Matt, I believe you mentioned is the 14.2 release coming out this week. So there's going to be a beta, uh, and I believe it's going to come out today. Um, so again, when I talk about future releases and things, it's always subject to change. If we find something that uh, requires us to delay, we will. Uh, but the expectation is that a 14.2 version will be out this week. Yes. How many subscribers can a 450i support? So all of the 450 platform devices, the access points can support up to 238 subscribers per access point. Uh, that includes 450 and 450i, and includes all the frequency bands. Great questions, everyone. Uh, Matt, is the 802.3 AT standard PoE support on the 450i slash M for both the SM and the AP? On 450i products, Yes, uh, there's a there's two ports, and that's the it's 802.3AT input, and then also on the on the 450i products, it's an output um, for 802.3AT as well. So yes, and 450M will also have an aux port uh, that'll support power out, and the 450M will actually also have a, an SFP port, so it has three ports on it. See, Matt, one more here. Does the NET and the SMs affect data throughput a lot? NAT. Uh, does NAT affect throughput on the SMs? Um, so on the SM side, you won't need a whole lot of uh, horsepower to do to perform NAT on the SM. Uh, on the AP, using NAT used to affect the AP, the sector wide. If you're using NAT across your whole thing and you have lots of subscribers, uh, we used to have some some slowdown in terms of uh, processing power when using NAT. Uh, since we've made updates to the, the Mac, uh, that, that problem's been largely reduced and uh, just about eliminated. 
Uh, my recommendation is if you're using NAT across your network, you may want to consider using the 450i as it has much more processing power to be able to do that. 450i for the access points. The subscribers shouldn't be affected much at all by, by using NAT as an individual. Fantastic. Well, thank you everyone for the questions. I want to thank you all for joining. I do want to recommend joining us and sharing your stories on Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, wherever. Look at our YouTube pages. We're constantly posting videos and updates on there, as well as accessing our community forum. We're constantly uh, looking at. We're looking at ideas from you guys and what through what ideas you have and um, changes you would like to see, as well as you can even hear from Matt and other product line managers who are constantly looking at answering questions and posting their thoughts on there as well. And I do want to say one more thing is that uh, cambiumnetworks.com slash go massive uh, is a blog we've started where we're putting out more and more information about that massive MIMO product and where, where we're headed with that. So check that out, cambiumnetworks.com slash go massive. Fantastic. Well, Matt, I want to thank you for your time, and I want to thank everyone for joining. And without further ado, I just want to wish everyone a good day and a good evening, and we'll see you guys soon.